Amen. Greetings once again in the matchless name of our risen Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for another opportunity uh, that He has given us to come and listen to the Word of God and most importantly to study the Word and be encouraged by the Word that God has for us um, this evening. Wherever you are tuning in from, we want to take this time, I want to take this time to thank you and welcome you in the matchless name, the name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in. It's our prayer that the Lord will bless each and every one of you. Will you please close your eyes and bow your heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, Lord. We just want to praise you. We thank you. Um, we uh, exalt you. We adore you. We lift up your name. For you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. There is no God like you. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Father, we are blessed to call you Abba Father. We are blessed to be called your daughters and your sons. And we are blessed to be given another breath, new, a brother, another new breath of life that allows us to be, able, to be able to be here once again to listen to your word. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. We thank you. We welcome you. We commit this service into your hands, Holy Spirit. Come and lead us and speak to us and teach us. For you are our teacher. You will encourage us. Uh, through your word. We commit everything into your hands, Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you for your forgiveness. If there are things that we have done that is not in line with the word, please forgive us, Father, and cleanse us uh, with, from all unrighteousness with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for taking our place on the cross. Thank you for dying for us. We thank you and we praise you. We praise you and we thank you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praises to be us alone. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, uh, forgive me for that. I just want to take this time once again to thank you for giving your time to join in and be part of this Bible study. And we pray that you will be encouraged by his words. Amen. Tonight we're going to go into Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, we will be looking at one of the, um, the characters in the Bible who has been chosen by God. But um, this man, or this character that we're going to talk about, he gave a lot of excuses. Uh, his name is Gideon. Now, in the book of Judges chapter 6, beginning from verse 11... We'll be reading from verse 11 till verse 17. Uh, this is what the Bible says. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizarite, with his son, while his son Gideon thrust wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. So this man is doing something, but he was hiding it from the Midianites because of fear of what um, they have been through and what they are going through right there and then. So, this is what happens. Gideon thrust wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of Elah. Now, note or uh, bear in mind, this man is hiding from his enemies. While he was hiding from his enemies, then somebody just pitched up and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of Elah. Verse 13, Gideon said to him, just with that statement that, that comes from the angel of the Lord, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told, about, told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And then it says, So he said to him, in verse 15, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Excuses after excuses. Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. My clan is the weakest, I am the least. See, that's how he was looking at himself. Okay, he said, I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you. 
So God says to him, the angel said to him in verse 12, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of ill. And again, in verse 16, The Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. This man, he was chosen by God. God came down to him and conversed with him and he still gave out excuses after excuses. You know, God said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of El. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of El. You know, Gideon, you are doing a woman's job. That was a woman's job that he was doing. Okay. You are doing a woman's job. You are not called for that. You are a mighty man of Ela. The Lord is with you. So he started giving up excuses. And he even said this in verse 13. But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the enemies, into our enemies, the hands of the Midianites. So he was saying, if the Lord is with me, then why we are going through this? And sometimes this is what we go through. If the Lord is with us, then why we are going through this? Why this problems why these circumstances why are these distractions why are these obstacles if the lord truly is with us if the lord truly is with me if the lord truly is with my family or with my church or with my ministry why are we going through this sometimes you just need to understand that the only reason why you are going through what you are going through was because god is trying to grab your attention to let you know that he is with you in even in the things or in the middle of what you are going through. So he said in verse 14, Have I not sent you? I want you to know, beloved, that the God who sends you will also defend you. If you know that you have the call of God in your life, I want you to know that the one that calls you, the one that will send you, will be the same one that will defend you. The God that calls you, the God that will bless you, the God that will equip you, the God that will send you will be the same God that will defend you. If he says that he will be with you, he will surely be with you. But for Gideon, he was, he was um, trying to define himself by what the people think, by what they are going through. Don't define yourself by what you are going through. Don't define yourself by what the opinion of man will be. On your life define yourself by who God says you are okay now God said to him you a mighty man of Ela you are a mighty man of Ela God is with you but then he defined himself he said in verse 15 indeed my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least he was defining himself by the circumstances that he was going through so that is for you and for me tonight, beloved. Don't define yourself by what you are going through. Don't define yourself by what is happening all around you. Define yourself by what God says that you are and who God says, what God says that you are and who God says you are. Okay? If God says that you are mighty, that means you are mighty. If God says that you are blessed, that means you are blessed. If God says that you are called to be a minister, that means you are called to be a minister. Whatever the things that God is calling you into, always remember, define yourself by what God is calling you into. Don't define yourself by what is going on right now in your life. Okay? You, and this is a decision. Okay? You are defined by who God says you are, not by who, who man thinks you are. Or say you are. You have to choose to believe that. You've got to choose to believe that you are called by God. You've got for Gideon. He, Gideon needs to choose to believe in what the, the, the angel of the Lord says. And sometimes the only reason why you cannot be useful in the work of God. Was because of how you are defining yourself. You might be a good singer. But you are defining yourself that you don't have the capacity to sing. You might be a good musician, but you are not defining yourself or seeing yourself as someone who will play an instrument in church. You might be an evangelist. You might be a, an apostle. You might be a prophet. You might be a teacher. But you are not defining yourself, defining yourself by what God has given you. You are defining yourself by what the people are saying to, about you. 
So that is a decision making that you've got to involve yourself in. You've got to choose to believe in what God says you can do and who God says who you are. You've got to make a decision. You've got to choose to know that. Okay. Now this man was chosen by God to be used to save the people. And most of you listening to me right now, you are chosen by God to be used to deliver the people or to save people from the enemy. Okay, you have what it takes, but you are not looking at you as someone who is called and anointed and appointed and predestined by God. So from tonight, please change the way you, you look at yourself. Think of yourself as someone who is usable and useful in the presence of God, in the eyes of God. God is willing. You know, God is looking for laborers. God is looking for laborers, people who are willing to be used to do whatever it takes to win souls for his kingdom. Okay? Now, he said that to Gideon. Gideon, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of Elah. Verse, seven, verse 16, surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Okay? That means he's saying to Gideon, Gideon, everything will be fine. Everything will be done. Everything will be easy if only you know that I am going to be with you. And also, if only you know that you are a mighty man of Elah, you are chosen, you are predestined, you are anointed and appointed by God to be a mighty man of Elah. So for you and I who are listening right now, please remember, the world needs you. Souls out there, they need you. Your siblings, they need you. Your families, they need you. Your community, they need you. You've got what it takes to win them over to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got what it takes to snatch them out of the fire and enter them or and introduce them into the kingdom of God through the Son, Jesus Christ. But you've got to change the way you look at yourself. Amen? You've got to change the way you look at yourself. Now, I've, I've got some a few things for you that you can always remember and always do this. Look at yourself as this. Number one, look at yourself that you are a child of God. Okay? Look at yourself that you are a child of God. If you are a child of God, I want you to know that your God, which is your father, he owns everything in this world. Okay? Your God, who is your father, he owns everything in this world. Psalms 24, it speaks about the earth and the world that belongs to God and its fullness and everyone that dwells in it. So if God is your father, if you are a child of God, then everything that is in his, is in control is in his control is also under your control because God is your father. So number one, one thing you need to remember, don't be like Gideon. Gideon says, uh, my, my, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. Don't look at yourself like that. Don't look down on yourself. You are greater than what you think. You can do bet better than what you are doing right now. Yes, you might be working for God now, but you can do better than that. You can progress. You can increase. But you've got to change the way that you look at yourself. Number one, look at yourself as you are a child of God. Galatians 3.26 says this. You are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay. Galatians 3.26. You are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 4, 7, you are no longer a slave, but God's children. Yes, at one point, you are a slave to the enemy. You are a slave to the devil. You are a slave to the world. But now, you are no longer a slave. You are no longer a slave, but God's children. Since you are his children, God has made you also an heir. Not only a children, but an heir into the kingdom. So everything that belongs to your father now belongs to you. Why? Because you are a children. And since you are a children, you are not a slave. You have been made also as an heir into the kingdom of God. Number two, you are blessed. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what they think. Always look at yourself that you are blessed. When you know that you are blessed, you will be more than willing to do what God is calling you to do. Has called you to do. Okay, 
The only reason why we cannot do, we sometimes we know that we are called by God. Sometimes we know that we have the gifting and the talent in order to be used for the kingdom of God, for the purpose of his kingdom and for his glory. But because we look down on ourselves, at ourselves, and we think that we are not good enough, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to amount to anything, I am not, you know, I don't have a good qualifications, I don't have good education. It's not about having those qualifications, it's about a willingness. It's about a heart that is willing to be used by God. God will always equip those whom he calls. Okay, those whom he, who, who, those whom, who avail themselves, that's the word. Those who avail themselves. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those whom he called. So if you have nothing, but you are willing to be called and to be used by God, God will qualify you. He doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those whom he called. Okay? So remember that. Number one, you are a child of God. Number two, you are blessed. Ephesians 1, 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ who has blessed us you are blessed my friend so bank on that bank on that you are a child of God and you are blessed number three you are precious honored and loved by God you are precious honored and loved by God if people dishonor you that's okay God honors you okay if people don't want to love you, that's okay. God loves you. Remember, number three, you are precious. You are honored and you are loved by God. Isaiah 43, 4 says this, Because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I have loved you, therefore I will give men for you and people for your life. The greatest reward, the reward that only comes from God, will be given to you when you know that you are precious you know that you are honored and you know that you are loved by God. Three most important words. You are precious. People might look down on you. You might be a nothing. You might be a nobody growing up. You might not have the best growing up, um, you know, best life growing up. You might not live with your parents growing up. But that does not define you. What defines you is what God has done for you. And what God has planned for you. Amen. Always remember. You know your relatives or maybe your siblings. Disown you. Dishonored you. But God says you are precious. You are honored. And you are loved. Because you are precious. Isaiah 43 4. In my eyes and honored and I have loved you. Therefore I will give man for you and people for your life. Number four. You are redeemed. You are redeemed. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. You are redeemed. Okay? You are redeemed. Christ has become the curse for us. <coughs> he has become the curse for each and every one of us. You are redeemed. You are blessed. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So no longer you are cursed. As a child of God, you are redeemed. As a child of God, you are blessed. As a child of God, you are precious, honored, and loved. Number five, you are set apart, sanctified, and ordained. Okay, number five, you are set apart, sanctified, and ordained. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five says this, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. How good is that? When people try to look down on you, God says, No, I knew you. When people say they don't want to know you, they don't want, they don't care about you. You are a nobody. You, you are not good enough. Always remember, God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Beloved, 
don't be like Gideon. Gideon says, my, my clan is the weakest and I am the least. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. Meaning I am a nobody. You are telling me that I'm a mighty man of Ela. That's what you see in, you've seen in me. But let me tell you what I've seen in me. I am a nobody. I, my, my clan is the weak in Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. So please don't say that to me that I am a mighty man of Vela. Because I know who I am. I know that I'm weak. But God says, no, no. Surely I will be with you. You are a mighty man of Vela. Okay. So he said this to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So number five, you are set apart, sanctified, and ordained. Number six, you are special. You are special. Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2 says this. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself. A special treasure. Above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. You are special my friend. You are a special child of God. You are a special daughter of the Most High God. You are a special son of the Most High God. You are a special servant of the Most High God. You are special. If the world says that you are not, God says that you are. And that's all that matters. That's all we need to know. That we are special. Okay, people might reject you. People might ignore you. People might distance themselves away from you. But I want you to know that you are special. You are a child of God. You are blessed. You have been redeemed. You are praises, honored, and loved. You are set apart, sanctified, and ordained. And you are special. Amen? You are special. Don't let anybody say otherwise. You are special. If everybody turns their backs on you, I want you to know that God is still facing you. And God is still welcoming you into his loving arms. You know why? Because you are special. He created you to be special. He ordained you to be special. He loved you to be special. He cares for you because you are special. He provides for you because you are special. And if that's the kind of God that we are serving, and if that's the kind of God who is looking for laborers, then please step in and say yes to him. You are special. You are a special treasure. Number seven. You are more than a conqueror. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him who had loved us. There's a difference between a conqueror and someone who is more than a conqueror. Because a conqueror is the one that actually was in the fight, in the battle, in the battlefield. Who was participating in the fight. That was a conqueror. But someone who is more than a conqueror, someone who, was, who does not take part in the battlefield, but enjoys the benefits of winning that battle. Okay? A conqueror and, a con uh, and, and someone who is more than a conqueror. But for us, as children of the Most High God, just like Gideon, you are more than a conqueror. You are a mighty man of Ella. And he says, oh no, my clan is the weakest and I am the least in my family. Okay, so don't look down on you. You have what it takes. You have been gifted for greatness. Okay, so you are more than a conqueror. Believe that, beloved. Please believe that, that you are more than a conqueror. And then number eight, you are made alive with Christ. So you are no longer dead, spiritually dead, because you are made alive with Christ. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, God made us alive. Sin kills, but love gives life. Grace gives life. Mercy gives life. Loving kindness gives life. You are made alive with Christ. Listen to what Paul says here in Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, while we are still dead in sinners, when we were still dead in sinners, God made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved. By grace. Okay? You don't deserve that. But grace gave it to you anyway. So you are made alive with Christ. Number nine. 
Not only you are made alive with Christ, you are seated with Christ. So every time you attack the enemy, you are attacking the enemy from your position seated with Christ. I want you to know that when you rebuke every sickness, when you rebuke every spirit that is not of God, every form of sickness in the body, when you rebuke that, I want you to know that you are rebuking that from your position seated with Christ. Because Ephesians 2, 6 says that you are seated with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when you rebuke every form of sickness, you are rebuking that from your position seated with Christ. So that means you've got to have that right relationship with Jesus so that you are seated with him. And when you are seated with him, every word that comes out of your mouth is powerful because you are using your position seated with Christ. And sometimes when you rebuke those sickness, they don't live. Sometimes when you cast out demons, try to cast out demons, they don't live. Why? Because you have no power. Why you have no power? Because you have been wandered away from your position to sit with Christ. Christ has done the work. You just have to be seated with him. He has done the work to give you the privilege to sit with him. And stop running away from him. Because the moment you run away from him, you will be stripped of your power. You will be stripped of your anointing. You will be effective in your gifting, but not with that anointing. And if you are operating on your gifting without the anointing, you are trying to do something away from your position seated with Christ. There will be no power. There will be no convictions. There will be no soul saved. Because you are attacking the territory of the enemy, not from your position, which you are meant to be attacking the enemy from. And that is seated with Christ. So it's important, beloved, to know that it, you've got to make the effort. You've got to make a choice. You have to make your decision that you will be looking at you as a child of God, seated with Christ. Because that gives you the authority, beloved. Jesus said, all the authority that the Father has given me, I now give it to you. So go out into all the world. So as you are going out, remember, you are going out from your position with Christ. That's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You've got to be with him. You've got to be seated with him. When you are seated with him, then you will be able to attack the enemy. Your words will carry power. Your words will carry convictions. Your word will do a lot of things because you are using your mouth to utter those words that is coming from your position seated with Christ. If you are not seated with Christ, nothing will work for you. You will not be effective. Yes, you can preach your heart out, but it will never do anything to the listeners because you are not seated at the right position to be seated with Christ. You cannot do anything to be effective if you are not seated with Christ. Remember this, beloved. If people, if you are doing something and in your own eyes it is effective, but you know for yourself that you are not seated with Christ, that that is the work of the devil because the devil can do miracles as well okay deception people nowadays will operate on their gifting without the power without their anointing so it's important to go back after you do what you do go back to your seated position with christ go back to your prayer life go back to your devotional life sit down with christ because the moment you rise from that position you will attack the enemy with Jesus backing you 110%. You've got to make a choice that you will go back and be seated with Christ. And lastly, number 10, God is working in you. Okay? God is working in you. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Both to will and to do. The willingness to do what God has called you to do. Okay? God is doing the work in your life so that you have the willingness to do what you need to do. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. For his good pleasure, not for your own pleasure, for God's good pleasure. Galatians 2.20 It is, you know, this is what Paul says. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. 
Okay? When you are approached by someone to be used by God, don't look down on yourself. Always remember, Gideon was like that. But then the angel of the Lord said to him, You are a mighty man of Elah. The Lord is with you. You are a mighty man of Elah. And then in verse 16, he then said, uh, verse 15, Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. That's when the angel make his mark and said, Surely I will be with you. I will be with you. So in this case, the angel of the Lord doesn't want to reveal his identity. Because he says in verse 12, the Lord is with you. He says, he's talking about somebody else. He says, the Lord is with you. But in verse 17, verse 16, he said, surely I will be with you. So now he reveals himself, Gideon, you are not just talking to an angel. You are talking to God himself. You are talking to, the, so I will be with you. Surely I will be with you and we shall defeat the Midianites as one man. So beloved, don't look down on yourself. Number one, you are a child of God. Number two, you are blessed. Number three, you are precious, honored, and loved. Number four, you are redeemed. Number five, you are set apart, sanctified, and ordained. Number six, you are special. Number seven, you are more than a conqueror. Number eight, you are made alive with Christ. Number nine, which is important, you are seated with Christ and attack the enemy. Go into enemy territory. Go beyond, behind enemy lines with your position seated with Christ. If you don't sit, don't go. If you cannot afford to sit in the presence of God, then please don't stand to preach because you will be telling lies all the time. If you want to tell the truth, if you want to preach the power of God, if you want to preach under the anointing of God, then you must learn to sit. Once you are able to sit, then you can stand. If you don't sit, then don't stand. If you don't kneel and pray, then don't stand. Because you don't have the stamina, you don't have the power and the anointing to share the word because you don't sit in the presence of God. Okay? So you've got to know that. You, verse number eight, uh, sorry, number eight, you are made alive with Christ. Number nine, you are seated with Christ. And lastly, number ten, God is working in you. And some of us, God is still working in you. You are still a working progress. You haven't finished yet, but don't allow that to deter you or to draw you from being used by God. Whatever things that God is calling you into, always remember to say yes to Him. Remember this, the God who calls you His children, the God who bless you, the God who says that you are precious, honored, and loved, the God who redeems you, the God who sets you apart, sanctified you, and ordained you. The God who says to you that you are special. The God that says to you that you are more than a conqueror. The God that says to you that you are made alive with Christ. The God that says to you that you are seated with Christ. The same God who is working with you, He will send you and He will also defend you. Amen. The same God that calls you, He will anoint you, He will bless you, He will send you and He will also defend you. So stop looking down at yourself like Gideon. When the angel came to him, he says, no, I am not that man. I don't know what you're talking about. I am not a mighty man of Elah because my clan in the, in, is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. So I'm not good enough for the task. Find somebody else. But the Lord says, surely I will be with you. And some of you need to hear that now. Surely God will be with you. It's my prayer that the Lord will bless you. Um, and keep you always. Remember, if you know that God is calling you, always remember to look at yourself as this. You are a child of God. You are blessed. Amen. You are precious, honored, and loved. You are redeemed. You are set apart, sanctified, and ordained. You are special. You are more than a conqueror. You are made alive with Christ. You are seated with Christ, and God is still working in you. Knowing that God is working in you, that settles everything. We are indeed blessed. It's my prayer that the Lord will bless you. Please close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, we just want to praise you. We just want to thank you. Thank you for reminding us of who we are when you have called us. Lord, help us to stop ignoring your call, to stop running away from the task that is before, before us that you have called us into. Lord, I pray that you will give us the courage, the power, the knowledge, and the wisdom, and the understanding 
to be usable and to be willing to be used by you. Father, we thank you. I pray that you will bless each and every individual, bless everything, and whoever is out there listening tonight, Lord, I pray that you will bless them as well. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We'll never forget to return the glory and the honor and the praises to be us alone. We ask all this in Jesus' matchless, powerful, wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you once again, brothers and sisters. That's for our Bible study tonight. It's my prayer that the Lord will bless you and keep you always. Stay safe. Stay blessed. God bless you all. Lakar.